Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The bad guy. Academics. One of those weeks, man. It's my week. <laughs> it's my week. <laughs> I just told him outside the hall. I said, God damn, man. I said, everything? And you just pissed off everybody? You know what the funny part about it is? Let me tell you this. I, it, it's really when they select a nigga every single time where it's like, yo, we all attacking him. You know what I mean? It's the internet. And by the way, it's just one of those weeks. Like, it's, it's not my first time, so... I'm handling a little bit better, mm -hmm. so I know, like, you know, after this tough week, it gets a little bit better, but, you know, I ain't choose it. I've always, by the way, here's the thing, I always, every opinion I, I'm given, mm -hmm. or every opinion that's pissing everybody off, it's not like I'm just shooting out hot takes. If I'm just shooting out hot takes or shit to, like, be, like, shocking, I'd be like, damn, man, I'm tweaking. But a lot of these things are, like, you know, again, um... And I don't know if you want us to just jump into like go whatever. Go ahead, go, go, go. Essentially, people are taking a thirty or forty or sixty second clip out of me streaming for five hours, mm -hmm. and I'm talking about all type of things. I'm breaking things down. I'm having full in depth conversation, full with context. And obviously, if you got to be, you guys do radio. I, I mean, so. I think like, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. But, 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 but even like when, when you have to talk to a crowd or talk to any audience live mm -hmm. for four or five hours and you got to be entertaining, mm -hmm. you got some jokes in there. You got some tongue in cheek comments. And those are the shit they're only focused on. Nobody wants to talk about nothing actually solid. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, he said, he said, he said all the OGs are broke and dusty. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. And also, that wasn't even the context well, of the conversation. You did say that. I, I, I didn't say all. You didn't say all. I didn't say all. Didn't I said all. some of them are. I want to ask you about that, right? Because you said something. You said you didn't um, choose this, but you did. Because whenever you choose to have an opinion on something, you're making a choice to talk about somebody, and you know you not might disagree. offend. Not disagree. I'm, when I said I didn't choose like this timing, is that yeah, yeah. if anyone knows internet culture, what I'm saying is that it, they could pick me in any week because I'm giving the same takes every week. I'm not. It's not like I'm. I'm like toning it down. Like mm -hmm. everybody. Oh, you phone, said this before. Yo, I, Yes! Oh, I've got said you, got you, got all you, got these you, got things you, got are you, not you, new you, opinions. You, so it's one of those things where, like, it, it, it's like cancellation and, like, people who claim they woke. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like, they'll when they want to go at you, it's new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not like they're like, oh, oh. So, so for everyone that's um, seen it for the first time, they're like, oh, he's tweaking this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People call me, they're like, yo, you should tone it down. I'm like, nigga, this is what I've been saying for the last three years. So now, so, so let, let's get some structure. I want to I start with... The DJ academics. That's yeah. what I seen first. People was like, is he a DJ? Is he not We're a DJ? We still talking about that, though. Now, that's the craziest thing. I was like, I thought he answered that before. No, no, but, but you know what's so funny about that conversation? Mm -hmm. The mere fact we're still talking about, you know, even that, like, you know. It was trending. But I, I think only a certain subset of, the, uh, of the, po the population still has this very rigid, what does it mean to be a DJ just like how, you know, even now people have this rigid definition of what it means to be a journalist. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, think about it. There's a lot of new media platforms owned by entrepreneurs. They have the editorial control over things that you could be, could see as journalism. Are they journalists? Like, it, a lot of things are being blurred. Now, number one, let's... let's even also, though, also, you're new to a lot of people. Like, even though you've been doing this for yeah, like yeah, 13 yeah. years, some yeah, people yeah, yeah. might have just found out about you this year or over the last couple of weeks. I, listen, I ain't gonna lie. A lot of the guys who, by the way, I looked up to most of them that responded. And by the way, I won't say all. 95% of the people who responded to me in terms of like OGs, mm -hmm. They weren't broken, Dusty. There was 5% that were, though. I ain't gonna lie. But the the, the, the 95% of them, mm -hmm. those guys, I'm like, these are the like success stories. But even then, y'all omitted the context. I was talking about passing on game. I was talking about educating the next generation rather than criticizing them. And I was like, sometimes y'all don't understand why they might not listen to y'all. One of the reasons they might not listen to y'all, y'all fucked up whether they signed a contract, bad contract, or or Whatever like pitfalls you you kind of get into in this game, you never pass it on. You never pass that knowledge. No, on. no, you're absolutely right. right. So, so now when it, now so you're when, not a DJ. Academics doesn't DJ anymore. You DJ when you was in college. I still consider myself a DJ. Do I got a DJ every day to be a DJ? Or no. no, he doesn't. I, Oh, no, I DJ every day. He don't oh, DJ every shit. day. I DJ every Listen, day. You don't spin on. You don't spin back. <laughs> no, no, he don't. No, he does every not morning. DJ up here no more. I DJ every morning. I go in that room and then I do my mixes. But so you so you still DJ? No, no. I, well, I don't DJ professionally anymore. I started out DJing, and then I got into media, and then 
pretty much listen. I'm I'm an entrepreneur at first. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I don't, like people be hemmed up over the DJ name. I'm academics regardless. So, you still, <laughs> so, so if you want to call me DJ, I could big act nigga. Cool. That's what it is. So I'm not over here trying to oh drop the DJ from my name. I'm still me. Okay. When the last time you was up here? What ten years ago? 2013. 2013. 11 years. Your first. So your first. Your first interview ever was with me. Yeah. Your first. My my first my first interview outside of like just talking to regular people. Yeah. Was with you and I remember you know and this is why I give you so much credit like there's there's a lot of backstories to it but I also Ex- I remember, want you to explain that backstory because I want people to know how long you've been doing this. Yeah. So 2013. Um. You know I'm trying to get into the media game. You know I was just never somebody who um. I was bad at networking, and I'm still bad at networking mm-hmm. because even though I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm quote unquote, you know, gained some popularity, a lot of people don't know me still because mm-hmm. I'm not out there shaking hands, hanging around, right? Mm-hmm. right. I do me, and if you know about me, cool. I, you know, these days a niche, mm-hmm. you could live completely off a niche. I've always thought I had a niche, so when I see everybody in the mainstream reacting to the niche, I'm like, oh shit, it's cool. But um, anyway, um. Back then, I'm just trying to get interviews with everybody, and I'm just hitting up everybody. I'm trying to like, yo, yo, can I can I sit down with you for 20 minutes? I make it comfortable. I, I'll go to wherever you at, mm-hmm. and I'm hitting up everybody. Me and Charlemagne, I, I used to always listen to Breakfast Club. After I, I follow his career and kind of study, because I've always wanted to study the greats. Mm-hmm. So I've studied his career a lot, and you know, I was one of those people where I'm also not a dick rider. So I used to try to challenge him, like, nah, you were wrong here, or you know what I mean. And we kind of developed a rapport on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was cool because I didn't know nobody famous, right? I'm like, damn, I didn't want to seem like I was like asking or begging and I expected to know. So one day I, I just DM'd him. I'm like, yo, I'm starting to do some interviews. Um, would you let me interview you? And he actually said, yeah, come up to the station. No run around, no nothing. And that was like one of the, the realest shit I've ever seen. You know yeah, what I mean? did it that little room over there, right? Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's how I kind of got my start. You know, and, you know, I give him credit for that because, you know, he was a, just a real individual. Like, I think a lot of people would have just turned it down or a lot of people would just ignore me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I think about that now when, you know, I try to still remain humble and, and, and remember that there's somebody else who's trying to be me. And also one of the things, you know, because I don't know if you remember this. After we did the interview, I texted you. I said, listen, I just want to keep an open line of communication from you. And that was me asking for mentorship. Mm-hmm. Basically say, I'm not I'm not going to abuse the fact that you gave me a chance to talk to you and now I got your number and be like, yo, can I get a job up at Hot Nights? No, no, not Hot Nights. I mean, Power Whatever mm-hmm. the case is. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't want no handouts. But I would love if you see me doing something for you to be like, nah, or yo, hey, you could do it better here. Just kind of give me mentorship. Mm-hmm. It's very important for anybody who's coming up in the game. He did that. You know what I mean? In a lot of situations over the years, he's always reached out and just showed me a lot of love and you know, I, I hope that I've re- not only reciprocated, but also I look at it for other people coming in the game. You know what I mean? Again, going back to some of the things that people are mad at me about, mm-hmm. granted, the broken, dusty thing is triggering. You know what I mean? It, it's, it, it seems very, and actually it is very disrespectful, so, right? So you're saying with that. So you admit it was disrespectful. I mean, if I, if I call a nigga broken, dusty, like, it's not, there's no way to say, oh, this is great. Yeah, that wasn't that right? Wasn't, that wasn't but, great okay. but I, I, I wasn't talking about everybody. You were saying it was a four hour conversation basically saying you feel that. A lot of these older artists, yeah, and, and I'll even take it outside of older artists, older DJs should look out for the people coming up so they don't do the same thing that they did, the pitfalls that they did. You got to pass the ball. And also, like, you know, w- when we think about even our Legends of Pioneer, because LL responded, mm-hmm. and I want to salute to LL. I, I think, you know, um, everything he said was right. Mm-hmm. So let me, let, me, let me put that on the table. I agree 100% with everything he said. Mm-hmm. However, 80% of what he said wasn't focused on what I was saying. Because he got off center. He, he said, well, you're equating money to contribution and like, like respect and all that. And that's not what I was saying. Mm-hmm. That's not what I was saying at all. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm never like questioning the contribution or, you know, I'm not appreciating the contribution of anyone who came before me. And I'm never saying that money is the only thing that validates that contribution. I was more so, and again, you know, the way I use my platform... I try to be very transparent. That's what gets me in trouble, too. Mm-hmm. I'm mad transparent. Mm-hmm. Like, I let people know what's really going on behind these industry doors. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the best that I know, the best everything I hear and see. So I could educate somebody else because I was that super fan. I was sitting at home listening to The Breakfast Club every fucking morning yeah, wondering, yeah, yeah. is that real? Is mm-hmm. this, like, what's the real shit going on? So, like, when once I got fortunate enough to kind of, like, 
peeked through the window and then I saw through the crack of the door. Like, I'm trying to pass that knowledge along. I don't see that a lot in, in hip-hop. I don't think people be passing that knowledge I, along. I thought you asked a valid question. And the valid question is, you know, if if, if you invented hip-hop, if you're one of the founders yeah. of hip-hop, why are you not financially well off? Now, we know LL answered that, and he gave some great reasons. So the next thing to me is, how do we make sure that these founding fathers are taken care of financially? I agree. I mean, listen, and and, and it's interesting, you know, I, I listened to your um, response to it, and you're you're right. I think anytime I bring up any valid points in hip-hop, granted, I'm going to keep saying it, The if you only go for that clip, you're just going to take um, offense to it. Mm-hmm. And I understand that. But usually people just attack me. Like, people don't want to talk about these real no. r- real conversations. Get a punching bag. Yeah, they don't want to talk about, okay, all right, cool. Y'all had y'all whole week. Everybody responded to me. Y'all cracked y'all jokes back. I got it. Cool. I'm taking it. But let's further the conversation now. Are we down to talk about the actual conversation? Are we down to talk about, you know, helping out some yeah. of these guys who are mm-hmm. some of the founding fathers? You know what I mean? Like, it, it shouldn't take the guy you hate or the guy who's irrelevant or the guy you didn't know to actually bring up the conversation about, well, a lot of the pioneers, well, some of their business weren't in order. Um, shoot, financially, they should be doing way, way well off compared to, like, what's actually going on for some. I'm not saying all, right? And I don't know if people want to have those conversations. But do, you, but do you feel like, and I'm sure you do, do you feel like the industry never wants to have a conversation and always wants to attack you? Because when Russell Simmons, you know, said what he said, right? Yeah. Out in Bali. Your reply was, we can have this conversation, but you're going to have to have a conversation with me about the shit that you're doing, too. That's a stab back. That's a, that's a stab. That wasn't yeah. just a, you know, let me talk to Russ. That was like, all right, Russ, I got you, but let's yeah, have this he's conversation about you, my nigga. You know no, no, I mean? no, no. I don't even really care because, again, I think we've beaten that horse, too. So mm-hmm. I'm not the nigga trying to, I ain't trying to handle birds the shit back around. You know, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, I always, I always say this. I've, I've been trying to live by this, you know, motto a mm-hmm. bit, uh, a little more. I'm like... If if you gonna dig if you gonna dig a grave for somebody, make sure you dig one one for yourself too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This whole this whole thing where we all attack one person, just remember it's gonna be your day. It's all a circular fire. Absolutely, squad. all of it. I've had weeks where I see, oh, we all jump at him. All right, fuck it. Well, I know some shit about him too. I mean, we, fact, all, we, we all been jumped up. I before. get jumped all the time. We got jumped before. Well, well, physically with you one time. Yeah, but. physically <laughs> one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but so. Once it was my week, and, I, and that's what I'm saying. It's not my first week. I was just like, all right, cool. I'm going to take it this week. It's cool. Everybody was doing well. They say, hey, you good mentally? I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. But we should probably advance the conversations. We're not good with having conversations. Like, I, I'll give you another thing that they usually try to jump me on. They're like, yo, well, you built your brand off exploiting the death of black kids in, like, Chicago. Chicago, Warren yeah. Chirac. Right? Now here's a bigger here's a bigger discussion. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I got me for the week. I got me for those moments. Y'all said, are we gonna talk about you know what I mean the effect? Like we we just had rolling loud. They took like five drill rappers off of it. There's mad killings that are happening because of music that are that's actually promoting the shit. We look on DSPs. Those songs are the, at the top of playlists. Are we gonna talk about those bigger issues? Or nah, nah. Let's put the band aid over that. Let's attack act. And, and I'm not only saying I'm the only person that gets attacked. I'm just saying, could anybody bring up some valid points in hip hop and actually have serious discussions? And by the way, that's why I'm, I'm down to talk to LL, and and I'm gonna talk to uh, T. Uh, T. I reached out too. Mm-hmm. You know, he, <laughs> T. I is hilarious. T. I was like trying to talk to me yesterday. He said, "Yo, listen, man, my birthday festivities starts today." I oh, y'all did, y'all did talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. So, but no, but we don't have a, a, a official talk today. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, it was birthday, so you know, we, we want to do um too much. But um, yeah. And I told you too. I hit, I hit you this week, and I said, you know, your tone is gonna cause people that's, to that's not hear you either. That's a fact. Because that's why I'm like, I know you're not gonna talk to LL like that in person. And I and I understand when when you're when you're performing, it's performative, right? Well, okay, but, but okay. You, but if you was actually talking to LL, I would it'd stand be a on every point. Conversation. Though. I would stand on every. I it's believe just, you so would. My yeah. points wouldn't change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even when people saw when I um. When I got, like, my first big opportunity, I guess, in the quote-unquote industry, like, when I got on Everyday Struggle, yeah, obviously, that's a different way of, like, you know, um, communicating Delivery. than my stream. So, mm-hmm. yeah, the tone changed. But even if I was wrong or quote-unquote wrong to most people about any point, I still stood on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, again, of course, I'm on the stream. Which, by the way, as a broadcaster, I've been learning that a lot. Like, you know, this recent thing about, um, you know, even with, 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 with Toya, I, 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 I did a tone check before. Because 
I knew that was going to get lost in it. You know what I mean? I knew it was going to get lost in it. But I do have to say, like, you know, this is a newer medium, which I think a lot of people are, are, are should be understanding. I live stream. I live stream discussing hip-hop topics. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this is a, and I do it on Twitch. And you're drinking. And I'm drinking. Yeah, yeah. But also, I'm trying to en en entertain people. Mm -hmm. Like, when it's you versus the whole feeling, it's just you as a microphone, Nigga, you better be funny. You better have some jokes. You better be, you got to be a little theatric. You can't just be there just monotone. Just, nah, shit ain't going to work. So at times when you're discussing things, right, if it's clipped, and my clips always either look super hilarious or, damn, he's disrespectful. You know what I mean? Now, I have spirited the base. I really love hip-hop. Mm -hmm. I love this culture. You know what I mean? It's giving me everything. It's, it's allowing me to retire my mom. I, I love it. But I, I'm passionate. And that's why I'm trying to learn as a broadcaster. But even then... It's hard to control where I could just immediately know that, oh, they're going to clip this part. Get your tone in check. You do understand why Toy is mad, though. Um, Of course. Mm -hmm. Even, uh, all right, so, so, I, let's I, talk I, about I didn't hear the clip because it was, it was, so, <clears throat> in what reference did you call her daughter a bitch if you have a, okay. if you called her a bitch? Okay, so, I didn't necessarily refer to her as a bitch. I was speaking about, right, um, a public relationship that's been posting on Shade Room and everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. Everybody keeps saying, yo, act while you comment on these things. So we're, in a, we're in an age that people are monetizing their that. relationships. Absolutely. You yeah, can't, man. like, I monetize my life, and if I share stuff, I can't be like, yo, show me. Why you talked about that, dog? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's facts. Now, granted, there's sensitive areas there, mm -hmm. and that's where I wanted to make sure when I addressed it, my tone was right. Number one, she's a black woman, mm -hmm. Right. Toya and, of course, Regine, right? I was extrapolating from commenting directly on that relationship to making a larger point. I, I'll, I'll try to break it down simply. And it was really also, I'm riffing. I'm cracking jokes. I'm cracking jokes, okay? And I even said it on, the uh, I think she had Shade Room posted, and I, I said, I said, listen, it was a joke. Um, and by the way, I did say the B word. I retracted it one second later. I said, I shouldn't say that because her name was slightly associated with it, right? So I was talking about Regine. I said, it's kind of interesting and, and funny. I'm cracking jokes. Mm -hmm. Yo, she was with wife and Lucci. Puerto Rico, she smooth just dipped on that dude. She got like the opposite of, of like his archetype, which, mm -hmm. which I'm just saying a gangster, right? I'm like, I know a lot of, and that's when I use the word, I know a lot of the B words, and I said, I shouldn't say that. A, a lot of women who do the same thing. You get what I mean? Yeah, the, the B word is a conundrum, right? Because it's, it's like the N word. Um, you know, when you use it the way you used it, or when you hear it in music, it doesn't say, bother you. But if somebody called your mama that, uh, a woman that you loved that, now you up in arms. So I, I even, you know, even when you see the rappers getting upset, I'm like, well, y'all use that in your that's music. That's another thing. You see, all the time. You, you see, that's another. But, but I get it, though. I get it from both. I get. I understand both sides. I will say this, right? You use the word so much, it frequently just comes out. But he didn't say that bitch this that ever. If he said that bitch, oh, let me let me. I apologize. I shouldn't have used that. He cleared himself. I don't think up. we should use the word at all. And, right, you know, right, it's right, funny. But, we, but you see what I'm saying? He, he didn't say it like, yeah. fuck that bitch. He cleared yeah, himself I, up. I cleared it up. And by the way, you see, I didn't, I didn't hear it. So that's what I'm asking. Yeah, I cleared, immediately, like mm -hmm. as soon as, as, soon as I, said, I shouldn't say that. And then and I said like women or something that was definitely much more appropriate. But here's the point. And just because I know people don't even want to have these discussions. Mm -hmm. They rather just say, even though you cleared it up a second earlier and we don't like you this week, mm -hmm. th and this is a perfect clip. By the way, Toya said, listen, I, I don't know if... Toya because, told you that you act like a bitch. <laughs> yeah. She said, and, she did. Hold on. <laughs> and you know what I said? I was, because she was like, don't talk about don't talk about my child like that. I'm like, damn, but you talking about my mama's child. Like, you talking about me? Like, like listen, first of all, I'm not commenting on a kid here. Like, she's 23 years of age. She's, she's having a public relationship. And by the way... I've commented on this a lot. I think people also think, um, and maybe I'm having a problem with this. I don't know if y'all do. I still look at shit like the nigga in the comment section, and I still comment on shit because I. Mm -hmm. And also, granted, because I don't know these people, I'm I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I'm also not sugarcoating shit. Be like, oh no, this is you know, you could com I could comment on Aria Moneybag, yo, but this right here, oh mm -hmm. nah, nah, you can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. I talk about everything, just like yeah, when I get it. if if you read the comment section on the Shade mm -hmm. Room. My my Instagram, 
Niggas in there give it up, but they, they tell you what they really feel. But I still be out here. You talk like a Twitter nigga. I talk like a Twitter nigga. I, I will say this, though, but when you have a child, right? Yeah, yeah. Like with me, like my family. Talk about me all day. You know, they make jokes about me all day, left, right, up, down. I'm gay this week. I'm not gay this week. Me and Charlamagne's dating this week. I don't care. Wait, don't, don't, don't bring me in this. I'm bringing you in. <laughs> be, you be gay on your own. No, no, okay. No, no, you gay, right? <laughs> but when it comes to outside of that, yeah, yeah. somebody might think it's a joke, even with Jesus and Mero. They thought it was a joke. I ain't play with my wife. Nah, that's different, joke. though. You see what I'm saying? That's different. I, 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 would you consider your wife as a public figure? You could because she wrote a, we wrote a book. Well, at that time, no. did, she, she was she was not a public no, figure. I don't think so. No. If I talk about one of Charlemagne kids who nobody knows, mm -hmm. and by the way, I'm guessing they're probably like under 18, it's different than you have a relative. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I'll give you an example, right? My mom, I just retired her. Mm -hmm. um, and she told me, she said, well, son, you know, I'm a Jamaican mom. I got to keep busy. I know you're going to give me money this and third, but I need to do something. So she told me, she said, I want to do a YouTube channel. I said, and I'm talking her out of it. Hell no. I said, hell no. You get what I mean? Unless you can handle that. Unless what, you can handle the is, slander that your mom is going to get because of you. But it depends but, on what the channel is. No, 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 no. If she's cooking. It no, don't it was a, it was matter. Cooking channel. It was a cooking channel. No, no, no. It, no, it, don't, it matter. don't matter. She don't have to know what it is. They're no, going to it slander they're gonna know the shit it's my out mom. of her. They're going nah, to they're, 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 they're know it's my mom. Trust me. And that's I, I, what the conversation is I'm trying to say, mom. I've shielded my entire family from all the hate and vitriol I get online because I signed up for this. Mm -hmm. I would rather you not get into that life because just off proximity to me, you're going to have to deal with some hate, ridicule. And honestly, if you want to be a public figure by now getting into this life, it's fair game. So you know how I could control it? Ma, nah, let's try to figure out something else. Because the moment she started... She she starts doing that. She's a public figure, right. especially when you're sharing your life. So so with that said, you know, you wouldn't want somebody to talk about your mom the way you might talk about somebody other women or other people, right? right? No, no, it's not that I wouldn't want them to talk about it, right? Because that's not the thing. It's just like, well, could you handle that though? You heard somebody calling your mom the b word. Well, if, if my mom is a public figure, I would I absolutely have to handle it. Yeah, absolutely. If she's a public figure, yes. Say. My mom gets in an argument. Say my mom is it, it becomes a public figure and she's on one of these housewife shows. Mm -hmm. She loves th those little shows, right? Mm -hmm. And now she does something, and whatever the internet chatter is, is that they're calling my mom the B word. Mm -hmm. By the nature of knowing what this comes with, we're all monetizing mm -hmm. off our lives, our brands, shit that's public. We're monetizing for the clicks. We're monetizing for the conversation. Let's not be hypocrites to say you could only control the conversation. You got to keep it nice with my moms. No. Mm -hmm. My mom, my, my mom got to be able to handle it, number one. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's m much more than me handling. It's my mom. Mm -hmm. I've had ten years of training. People, people comment about my weight all the time. I'm numb to it. I'm numb to it. At first, I was in my feelings. Hey, for real? Of course. Not because they're excessive. Like, oh, my people, they be all this shit. Them shit be funny, though, Addy. And when I go to your page, bro, <laughs> <laughs> the comments they be nah. making be funny but as not, shit. But not for no black man to black man, you got to lose some weight. Stop drinking so much, bro. You go over. No, no, no. Not with the drinking, but yeah, definitely weight. What, you, what, drinking my morning, too my, 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 huh? You go hard. Drinking and weight. You got you to. Nah, no. Nah, the, the, the drinking, I think is decent. The weight. What? What? You be blacking out sometimes. I, I, you passed out on. You passed out, you passed out on, on the screen, man. That's not because of liquor, though. I'm tired, yo. I told you, I sleep four hours, yeah, uh, four yeah, hours yeah. a night, and I'll sleep two to three in the middle of the day. That's why I don't stream at nights no more. Like my audience wants me to stream at nights. Like even when when I slept, uh, I fell asleep. I fell asleep while I listened to the Drake album. People didn't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> See. <laughs> You just never stop. You just never stop. <laughs> you. you fell asleep yeah, listening to Drake. No, but, yeah, Which it. one? The new one? <laughs> nah, 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 Drake hit me and he said, Yo, Drake hit me and said, Yo, act. Oh, this oh one, man. The new one drive, he said, Yo, please listen to this one privately. He said, Don't go on stream <laughs> and do the first listen. But no, no. It was it was oh, Certified Lover Boy. Okay. I listened to it once and on my stream, we played again. So it was mm -hmm. the second listen and I fell asleep. Album that album was delayed, bro. It's three forty-five in the morning. I were listening to music. That's another thing I don't like about me. <laughs> Yo, three forty-five in the morning. I know I cater to super fans, but like, bro, like, That's I'm tired, man. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, you have to be energetic the whole time. I'm like, man, I'm tired, so I'm listening to the music. So it's passive. I'm not talking. I'm, there's no adrenaline kicking, and I'm like, I don't even know what. I'm sleeping. Sorry. All right. Let's, let's go back to the the, the the women thing because me and you had this convo a couple of years ago. I yeah. think it was around the. Chrissy Teigen thing, uh -huh. and we was on the phone talking, and I was like, you know, and I, I hate to see people making the same mistakes that mm -hmm. I made, so I was telling you, like, yo, you cannot be disrespecting these 
these women. Like, you got to go easy with the, the bitches and the hoes and the this and that. By the way, the Chrissy Teigen thing was, I believe, I think very different than this. You know, I don't um, even remember what it was. The, well, what exactly that was it. aimed at her, and and that was definitely very like you know. In you that, called up, you called up bitches too, right? Yeah, yeah I, I, it was hateful too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I think that's the thing because let, let's think about all these colloquial words we use, right? S somebody might just be on some holistic shit to say, "Yo, y'all should stop saying nigga," but it, you could you could use nigga in all type of different contexts, mm -hmm. right? Same with the word bitch. There's a lot of people who use bitch in a positive way and a negative way. When I used it for her, and that's why I did apologize, <clears throat> it was very hateful. Mm -hmm. And it was because I felt she slighted me at one point. And at that time, I was just, like, super upset. How did she slight you? So, um, you know, and, and by the way, I hate to even explain it. It's, it's, these are one of these things where, like, I treat it almost like DV in a way. I know I'm getting a little deep, but, like, it don't matter if Shorty hits you. You can't do nothing back. You just got to mm -hmm. take it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, a couple of years before... Um, she says something to me. No, oh, six nine just went to jail. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. he just went to jail. Everybody's getting their jokes in. She throws up on her on her on her Twitter a meme with me and six nine looking sexual, and basically putting it out there like we gay or some shit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Now, granted, I'm I'm Jamaican. I was born in Jamaican. I mean, that's not some shit we you know, especially if it's not true. Mm -hmm. You know, we have nothing against you know um, people from the LGBTQ community, but. That was not true, and you're also trying to make a joke of, you know, somebody I know that went to jail, and also you're trying to, you know, put this out about me, like, mm -hmm. whatever. She did it, like, twice. I ain't say nothing in the moment, because really, I know everybody roasting six nights, but it happened. But I held it, and I held that until it all came out that one night of the stream when I saw John Legend flop, and I'm seeing her tweet every two days trying to cancel another motherfucker, and I'm like... Why don't you promote your man album just like how you be on Twitter doing a, a whole lot of bullshit? But mm -hmm. obviously, that's when those words came out. Now, granted, and this is why I, I, I said there was some growth. By the way, thank you. We had, we had a great talk about that. Mm -hmm. There was some growth in the sense of I know when, sh when you know, she was being canceled as well. Mm -hmm. And I remember that everybody started to circle back around coming to me. Be like, yo, what do you feel about it? And I said, you know, having been that person who that was another bad week, mm -hmm. I understood what she was going through. You know what I mean? I understood, like, a lot of people were laughing when she said, well, you know, I'm depressed. Like, I have to turn my phone off, but I'm depressed without it. And I felt bad for her more than, you know, um, thinking that, oh, you know what, finally, she she's getting what, you know, I felt at that moment. So, you know, um, in that sense, I was super hateful with it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the only reason why I say it's different. Um, I think th they're taking this one a little bit out of context just because, yes, I did use the word, which, by the way, it was interesting when people did get mad at me at first. Some people were like, "Oh, it's because you were you used the word bitch," and then everybody got everybody just saying bitch all over the place because it does matter the context. Mm -hmm. It definitely does, right? And we can't all be like, "Oh, act, you said the word bitch. Let's just erase bitch." Because here's the thing: I'm down for any rules. Mm -hmm. Is everybody gonna stop saying it? Mm -hmm. We should. Will, will all the rappers stop rapping? And 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 because by the way, here's the thing: and I don't want to flip it to this angle neither. Mm -hmm. The reason why. I already said this about the word nigga. Mm -hmm. I was born in Jamaica, Spanish Town, Jamaica. The first time I, the first time I cognizantly ever heard the word nigga was in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That, that shit has been littered in my vocabulary through learning it socially, through music, and other methods that you get indoctrinated to it. Mm -hmm. Same with I won't say the word bitch though, but but like no, I think the word bitch too. We we also got to think about the cultural influences to why when we're talking mm -hmm. why do we just constantly sprinkle these things they're like condiments to our conversation mm -hmm. to our theatrics mm -hmm. so granted i'll take certain blames but if are we going to have a bigger discussion about the the words because a lot of the times i heard that word being said i heard it being said in my favorite wayne verse mm -hmm. right the question, have you spoke to Chrissy since then, or are you open nah, I never to have a conversation to with Toya? Because obviously she's upset, and I'm sure she would love to have a conversation with you. I would Respectful love to, conversation, of course. No, no, I would love to have a conversation with Chrissy. Uh, well, no, well, I never talked to Chrissy, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I would love to have a conversation with um, um, Toya. And you didn't mean no you malice. You apologized to Chrissy. You didn't mean no malice, but calling, yeah, yeah. Her, would you, her, calling her daughter a bitch. Uh, you didn't mean no malice causing call, her Regina. daughter a bitch. Oh, 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 of course not. Okay. I'm, cracking, you, I'm cracking some lighthearted jokes. I, I, think she's a, I think she's a brilliant, fine young woman. I don't think she's like she's this. I'm not trying to be hateful. Have you apologized to her yet, though? I mean, in the sense of saying I'm sorry I used the word at all. Yes. I mean, I apologize, and of course, 
I'm, I'm sorry. It's the camera if, right there. Now, now's a great time. Nah, There's no time like the present. <laughs> no, no, no. If if she's taking it in that sense offensively, I do apologize. But I do have to say, because I don't want to apologize for something that, you know, I don't want the next time y'all hear me say the word bitch because it's used in mad different contexts. I'm like, didn't you just apologize? <laughs> I'll be a hypocrite. That's what you're saying. So I'm not trying to hurt her feelings. So I, that's the apology I'll give. I apologize if my usage of that word, even though I try to retract it, made you feel any type of way. That was and, 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 and vice, it, vice versa. The, the the people who are offended at act using that word, especially the rappers, they should think about that too. Next time they're in the studio mm-hmm. and they write their rhymes, they don't want to have that conversation. But we should. I think now, if, if you, I, I think these are the times I, I to have those conversations. I can't push. Y'all got y'all, 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 y'all got one of well, BT Awards. So y'all would, what, the b- biggest platform. Hey, y'all start that conversation. Let's see because y'all could bring some of these guys who don't respect me. They would. Mm-hmm. They rather just. And that's what I was gonna say with, with Toya. I would love to you know have a conversation with her. And I, I think I'm really having a conversation. I won't say with her, but I think through a conduit. I think t- that's why Ti is stepping in. Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? But I've always been open to conversation with anyone. You can check my track record. Usually it's people who say, oh, we ain't going to talk to you. We'll put up a post, right. but we, won't, we don't want to, like, we don't even want to engage in a conversation. Funk Flex and Salute to Flex. I don't know if y'all beefing, but, but Salute to Flex. Flex called me. Had a whole conversation with him. Put me on text with a bunch of people. It's like, yo, he's like, yo, I want to bridge some understanding. And he also made a post on Instagram saying, yo, he's trying to bridge some understanding through conversations. And you know what the majority of people said? Why the fuck would you talk to that clown? Mm-hmm. What, what could you, at that point, what could you do? Mm-hmm. So if that's how they see that, it puts me in a weird spot. Mm-hmm. Y'all are focused on what I say. Y'all care about what I say. But if I, and I always, I was telling my brother yesterday, because he, he's like, yo, damn, yo, you said something else. And I, and I had to tell him, I said, listen, I do about maybe... 50 hours, 50 to 60 hours um, of live audio or audio, you know, whether it's YouTube, podcasts, you know, my news updates per week. Mm -hmm. Extrapolate that to a year. I'm going to say some shit that, you know, I mean, maybe I thought it was a joke. People didn't think it was a joke. And, And I hope to just deal with it as it goes. But. There is no way I could just not offend anyone in this world. Not now. Now what's your situation? I think I, hold on real quick. I think mm-hmm. another thing that's missing too is like, as rappers are just us in hip hop have gotten older. You know, when you when you know better, you do better. Yeah, you correct. know, you get mm-hmm. older, we got kids, we get wiser. But the problem is, we haven't held ourselves accountable for the things that we used to do or used to say that may be influencing a 30-year-old person but, but like also, yourself. But also, that's why when we had the conversation on air, I don't know if you heard it, the first thing I said was, we need to talk to him. Let's, let's call him up and bring him up here and have that conversation. Yeah, because that's what respectable. Did, I did. Remember, I told you, kick a pre call me and check me. But I did the same thing because I felt the same way. I was upset Absolutely. about something, and, and I used it. So I'm never upset with somebody. I always want to know why. Are you calling him Broken Dusty, too? Huh? Now I used to call when me and Flex and everybody was going to, I used to call him old in, in that. Oh. And kick a pre pulled up on me and was like, Bro, we all have ages. We all get to a point. You never want to box somebody mm, out because of the okay. age. We all got a birthday. We all got true. a birthday. True, true. And it stuck with me, and I was like, all right, you're right. I'll never say that again. You know, I'll go at anybody I want, but I'll never use their age again and call them dusty or whatever it may be because you can't be mad at somebody for not having the knowledge. Because it's got to be confusing when rappers start telling rappers start coming at you for using the B word because then you're like, well, when did the memo go out that we're not using the B word no more in, in hip-hop? Correct. You know? So I want to go back to uh, also Meek Mill. Mm-hmm. Why don't you and Meek Mill get along? Where did that start? I, 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 I me, me cool. Y'all good now? We good now. No, oh, so, I, I believe we good. We talk. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> Yo, we good now. And so a wise man once told me, man, listen, you you don't ever know if you're really good with someone until you see them in person. <laughs> you okay, know what I mean? Right. But we did talk. Y'all did talk. You um, squashed out everything that y'all had. Yeah, so you know, I, I, I want to thank, and these are people, you know, I hope to do this for other people too. You know, some people think I'm an agitator, but, you know, in the last, like, year, when I've been able to try to bridge gaps or, like, you know, put two people on the phone or whatever, like, I try. You know what I mean? Shit, I did it with, you know, Latin NLE type, which is random beef. Like, I try to help mend that. I was trying to help this, you know, NBA young boy in, um, not Dirk, but NBA young boy in um, Kodak situation. Um, because, like, especially when you, you're you playing phone tag almost, one saying this, one saying that. I'm like, yo, listen, is there a way we can put it together? So I've always kind of been, been that type of person. Um, 21 Savage did something I thought was very dope. And he, this, he gave me this explanation. He said, yo, I think it was getting to a point. He's like, when two friends 
are going at it, if it goes far enough, you got to pick a side. Mm -hmm. And he basically said it was go it was going to a point where he was going to be forced to like, yo, are you really rocking with this nigga Ack or are you you rocking over here? You know what I mean? And um he put us on the phone and I got a salute to Meek as well because I, I don't think a younger Meek Mill would have been on the phone with me. Mm -hmm. And I think Meek has shown a little bit of growth. So I, I was down to have a conversation with him for like four or five years. You know what I mean? Like we've been on DMs, but it's never been like a real conversation. We did have a real conversation. And it was one of like, you know, um, let's stop the petty bullshit to each other. And let's, if, if, if we're not going to be going all the way with it, let's try to mend and build towards something that could be like amicable. Mm -hmm. And don't mean that we're going to be best friends in the club popping bottles, but we shouldn't be at each other's necks, especially when, you know, not necessarily like our paths have to intertwine. You know what right. I mean? So again, I thought that was a grown man discussion and I and I enjoyed it and I appreciate 21 Savage for, for, for facilitating it. Now, some, did somebody come to your mm. house and leave a note in your mailbox? Yeah, that bum ass nigga Rory, man. So, all right, so you and Rory are beefing and he came to your house. We weren't beef. What's beef though? I mean, somebody coming to your house is beef. Okay. Somebody come to my Bingo. house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank somebody you. Somebody come to yep. my house. Okay. Not only is the dog coming out, yeah. but I'm letting everything out. You Everybody's scared of that punk ass dog. Then come, come get some. <laughs> but that dog is coming come out, and then some. I'm I'm letting it all go. <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Come to your house. To your... <laughs> so what happened in that case? Yeah. So no. So to me, and, and that's another thing I've realized. This is strength of like when I'm on live stream. I treat it like eventually. I was telling shows. I was. I was like. One day I want to get up on stage because sometimes I'll be watching my own streams back. I'm like, I'm funny as fuck. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm on there. I'm roasting everybody. And sometimes we might have a disagreement, but I don't want you to die. Or I don't want to kill you. I don't want to threaten your life. But I got some jokes. Maybe like, you know what I mean? I want to just clown your beard or your chain or whatever the case is. So I'm clowning these guys, right? It, it was it's Rory and this other dude named Mealy Ma or whatever. They were Joe Bun's employees. And the jokes were stinging so crazy. And I, the whole time I'm thinking, well, if they feel that offended, they're going to just respond. This mad things to clown me about. Like, come on. Like, if you can't clown me, you, you, you're just not creative. Didn't respond over a while. So I'm over here. I'm just having a good time. I show it one time to my mailbox. It's a Hallmark card. And it had, like, some very interesting um, notation. It was like, hey, happy boss day. And I was calling these dudes workers and stooges for a long time. They signed a thing. It says, oh, uh, sincerely a stooge or whatever the case is. This time, me and Meek are going at it, too. We at the time. And there's other rappers, because I'm always, like, you know, responding to some rapper. I have no idea who this is, who did this, right? Even though there was some kind of hints, I'm like, damn, who did this? I look at my security cameras. Thank God. For, that's the first. When I bought my house, the first thing I did, I got the best security cameras Absolutely. Al 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 alive. Anyway, I see a fucking Kia pull into my cul-de-sac. A Kia. A, a Kia. fucking Kia, my nigga. Like a Kia Sorento or something like that. Wow. I nigga, the only thing the only thing that was a little weird, I'm like, yo, the maids usually don't show up on this day. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this ain't the postman. You know what I mean? Like this. So the Kia drives up and it drives right by my mailbox. So there's a long driveway down, right? So it's not like he's knocking on my door. It actually doesn't even enter the property, but like FedEx or whoever could just drop off shit in the mailbox. They sw The door swings open. I see a fucking ginger headed dude just kind of pop out and he reaches in, opens the mailbox, puts the thing in, and then the car tries to speed off, but it's a Kia. So it's taking a while to spool up, but I'm like, oh, that's the dude. Still didn't say anything. Because I'm trying to figure out how should I handle it. You know what I mean? And a lot of things, by the way, you know, I don't bring everything to, to the internet. As much as people think I do, mm -hmm. there's been people who have, there's been a lot of threats or situations that I'm just not going to run online like, let me just show you what's going on. You got to handle the situation personally and probably first. I guess he was trying to threaten me. So one day he tweeted at me and I get back to roasting him and he started doing the weirdest shit, which he's just self snitched on himself. He tweeted out my zip code in five tweets with the first n number of the tweet being one number of where I live. Basically, I know Bingo, where you live. I know where you live at. And also the stooge actually even signed the letter stooge. So at that point, I just thought, you know, all bets are off. You know, um, y'all niggas is gangsters. Man. Not me. I'm, I wouldn't show up to your house unless I'm trying to kill you. That's what I'm saying. Like, God damn. Maybe that's how I would have to take it. If you pull up to my house, I have to think it's a threat. I'm there so that's why when everybody is, or you there with your moms or whoever you did, I got to think it's a threat, an active threat. And then when I talked to them dudes, and it was just, this was just the the most, it's the most, I, I, even I got to quote, the most pussy thing I've ever seen. 
because he was like, you know, I'm going hard at him still, you know. Um, there was some other stuff that happened. Apparently, you know, he was like engaged, you know what I mean? His side chick happened to come over to the crib one time. You know what I mean? My man's piped aside. There was a lot of stuff going on. His relationship got broken up. It's a lot of stuff. Anyway, I, I guess, you know what I mean? He wanted to like try to resolve it. And we were talking to, through a few mutual people because he wanted to talk to me. That's what I heard um, directly. I just wasn't with it no more. You can't show up to my house and like, then you're like, let's talk. If I drop a pipe bomb on the steps of your house and then you happily or luckily like don't uh, defuse it, I can't hit your blade like your envy. Let's talk about this, bro. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. So um, I said I can't res I can't have conversations with a man who's doing these type of things. You don't even know who lives at my house. Mm -hmm. Say my mama lived there. Say like an older relative. Say there's kids there. You playing a dangerous game. He's going he's gonna to tell a person, yo, it wasn't me that did it. It was really my girl. My girl got Guyanese killers who want Axe Head, all type of dumb shit. And just the mere fact that not acknowledging that it's you and blaming on your girl, I just realized it's just some weak shit, man. So, you know. Um, that didn't make you think about how you move uh, differently, though, because, you know, if it's that easy for somebody to find out where you live and pull up on you. We all public it's, it's, figures, though. Of course. I think about that every day. Mm -hmm. um, shit. Shit happens all the time. You know, my, usually my people around me, them, like my family, they'll be more spooked. But, you know, I just try to adjust, move a little bit better. And, you know, again, we are making conscious decisions for this life. That's mm -hmm. that's one thing, you know, I learned that from you. Because, mm -hmm. you know, again, I could have also just ran to the middle of nowhere and just fucking lived in a bunker. But, um, shit, I like a couple nice cars. Shit. I bought some jewelry. Like, nigga, you're you going to have to mm -hmm. deal with some consequences or you're going to have to adjust to make sure that you're okay. Now, Joe Button also criticized you releasing the uh, PMB interview Yeah, uh, a couple days after his passing. Yeah. Um, what were your thoughts on that? Joe's my man. And I think I think Joe uh, primarily did that because he just got an Adam 22. I think Adam dropped, like, a video. Like, someone died, and he put, like, a video with the guy who, like, yo, meet the guy who killed... Blah blah blah, right? And I and I thought I think Joe was saying that was tasteless among other things when dealing with death. Um, I think this was completely different. So PNB mm -hmm. Rock, you know, tragically it and unfortunately, you know, passed away in L.A. He got murdered. Yeah, yeah, when, murdered. yeah. when somebody tried to like you know rob him, the same week we 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 do an interview where he's talking about a similar situation that almost happened. I remember I asked him. I said, so. Damn, why you think that happened like that? He's like, man, I don't know. The timing of it, I think, number one, it was newsworthy. So it, so it's different. I don't like when people are just trying to monetize off death. But I think that's newsworthy. That adds to what's going on because maybe this just isn't random. Mm -hmm. also, you know what I mean? It's not, oh. it's not, it's not even a hip-hop thing. Every media outlet does this. It doesn't matter if it's CNN, NBC, ABC. When somebody passes away, they got their montages and packages and old videos and pictures and old interviews. Everybody does it. I think I think in hip hop media, um, I like to say new and independent media is treated as differently because Revolt could run, you know what I mean, the oldest interview or freestyle they have of PNB Rock, and it's mm -hmm. kind of like yo, they're, they're paying homage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they're showing love. If you do the same, they're thinking, oh, you're making mad money off of him. Like, you just exploiting. So I, I do think there's a new so thing. So are the with TV networks. What do you think advertising advertisements are? Absolutely. I agree. When they do these specials where they play the funeral back, or they send, for Queen Elizabeth, they sent all their journalists over to the UK. Like, it's the same thing. Yeah. What, what we do or, like, what I'm successful at doing, and I, I like to call it, I don't want to dream on green myself on some new media shit, but I, I do think these new platforms are becoming so popular like some people are looking at certain podcasts or just certain blogs or certain, you know, certain YouTube channels as, mm -hmm. oh, these are like, they're almost as loud, you know, at least within certain aspects of the culture, mm -hmm. like a revolt. And I think people are extra critical of them because you also can see a face to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even though Diddy is kind of the face of revolt, still a whole corporation. You don't even think about some of the stuff that you think about when Act posts it, mm -hmm. right? That's when Act true. posts, you're like, oh, shit. So you mean the Act just made this decision and also for whatever reason people feel like it's wrong that people in new media make money I don't know what it is you know what I mean so it's like uh, again I try I try to understand it from their point of view like for me I would never exploit in the sense of um there's way you could be you could exploit like you know what I mean for example if I if I had a a, 
a moment or a, a negative moment of that said artist. And if we're passing it, we're going to show remembrance. And I'm just throwing that back up just to get some clicks because now everybody w- want to mm-hmm. get... I think that's exploiting. I wouldn't do I, that. I looked at it from a different perspective, too. It's like, you know, God bless the brother PNB Rock, but, you know, at the time, musically, he wasn't, like, popping. But you still sat down with him and you still had a conversation with him. I didn't see nobody else doing that. Oh, that's another thing. And this is why, you know, I, I was left kind of... um. I was torn on that because you know, you know th- there's so many people who are who are fake when it comes to that shit. Yo, I sat on the phone with PNB like they just got off Atlantic. Atlantic dropping mad people. They just got off Atlantic. Like bare bones, completely independent. You know, we set this interview up for months. We've been talking through like yo, he's like yo, he's planning this comeback. All right, let's do it. Nobody's fucking with him. Artists who used to be popping bottles in the club where they ain't fucking with him. They tell him literally, you ain't hot right now. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to be associated with him. If you watch the whole interview, he's like, yo, act. One thing I do like about you, you just always supported me. 2018, when I dropped my album, when everybody was like, oh, this ain't this ain't the best shit, and it didn't do that well. You on Everyday Struggle at the end of the year recap told me, nah, this one of the hardest albums. This mm-hmm. shit is fire. I'm you support me legit legitimately, right? Once he dies, everybody's now like, you know, like like they were caring about PNB Rock. Mad pretentious, you know what I mean? Um, but I don't want that to be the the, the subject of the um, conversation because really, you know, a, a young black man lost his life that's and right. that's the most important that's thing. Right. But there's a lot of people who are really pretentious with that. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're acting like I just pulled a PNB Rock interview out my ass from when he was popping in. No, none in, no, no platform. He was telling me these things on the phone. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, you I can was see supposed it. To, I was yeah. supposed to do interviews with them. They said, nah, now not the right time. I'm like, all right, so send me the music. I'm, I'm checking the shit out. It's like, damn. Where the features at? It's like, damn, I, that nigga, he used to give me back a feature back in the day. Now they told about some wild amount of money because they don't do swaps no more. Mm. Um, yeah, people switched up on him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I see all those people still throw up the picture. R.I.P. Everything is cool. You know what I mean? Then just just let it go. That let's go back. To, let's go back to some of the stuff from last week. Like, cause the one thing I saw people keep saying is, you know, what has academics done for the culture? How would you answer that question? Um. It's 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 a hard question for me to answer because I don't know if they value what what I know I've done. Mm-hmm. You know, so what is it? What is what is it? Just I've provided a platform. I think music these days has changed. The mere fact that people and artists like NBA YoungBoy, the mere fact that Drill is even gone to the places it's gone UK, Toronto, New York it's like one of the biggest and most recognizable genres and most infectious genres in the world there was a time that there was no media outlet really pushing it and really kind of like showing these stories and really telling you know people what was really going on with not only the popular artists but these other artists as well that's where my platform always got is you know um, um, I always, always got my come up I realized y'all y'all told about Drake, y'all told about Kanye. Mm-hmm. Y'all got a bigger platform, at least at that time. So I'm like, yo, I can't compete with y'all. So what could I do to be unique? Look for the, the place in the market that nobody was talking about. I you rappers like Lil Uzi, Lil Yachty, man, I was covering their lives daily. Mm-hmm. I'm going, let's let's put these guys up. I remember everyone said, yo, SoundCloud rapper, that would be a fad. Mm-hmm. I'm covering the Cardis of the world. Cardi just closed Rolling Loud yesterday. Uzi was in, at, at, in one of the biggest, you know, um, sets at Rolling Loud. Like, they're the biggest artists in this culture. And that's why they fuck with you the way that they do, because you supported them from day one, which was, which is what I always said about Axe. It's like, you can go back and look at Axe Page 10 years ago, 11 years ago, because I've been following him that long. These guys didn't have dreads. They didn't have tattoos. <laughs> yeah. But now they're some of the biggest stars well, in the well, world. Somebody would say, well, well, how do you give back to the culture, right? So, so how would you answer that? Well, I mean... It's not it's not providing a platform for dudes who are trying to get out of certain situations and and trying to further themselves um, in their career to help their family giving back. Like, w- w- what sense of giving back is is it is it just because? But I don't I didn't make a sizable donation to no, anybody. No, like, it like, what have do you to mean? Sizable donation, but like you said about you know some of the the as you put it, dusty old old rappers oh. that, that they don't necessarily give back to the other people who are coming up to explain and to break down the business. Oh, yeah, that's that's about a third of what I do. Mm-hmm. I remember sitting back and wondering, yeah, these niggas talking about their record contract, but how that looked like. I created a rap parody 
um, thing called Little Act that I could actually go get signed. That I could actually, like, I got a JV to make sure. Because I want to be, I remember back in the day when Ryan Clark looked at, like, Skip Bayless or, like, it was um, Stephen A. Smith and basically said, y'all niggas never play no ball? Like, how did, it was Jalen Rose. Jalen like, Rose, yeah, yeah. Jalen Rose. Like, yeah, yeah, y'all niggas never play no ball? Like, how are we going to listen to the nigga who's just the, the mm-hmm. guy in the stands? So I try my best to understand the game. And if you ask a lot of these newer artists, who was, who was I just interviewing recently? I don't know if it was Boston Richie or somebody else, but they were like, yo, you helped, you broke down the game for me and gave me a blueprint and understanding this shit when that seems so foreign and just far-fetched. So, like, that's, I think, what my contribution is. For example, recently, like, the, the whole future uh, selling this master shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Young, um, not masters, publishing. Young boy just signed some deal that that's kind of has some of the same the same um, elements, and I'm explaining to these people why I know we all preach ownership ownership shit, right? But th- there are smart moves that people do in the industry, and I explain how it makes sense. That's that's what I think. Music education. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's nobody else who, and especially you. I wouldn't, I'm not an artist. I've given more music and business education than I. I, I can't. Is it legitimate though? Like legit. Uh, Everything I'm saying is legit. I'm not just capping. Every artist calls me on it. They call me first of all. I'm getting. The, where do you Where do you get your information from? Most of these artists and executives. Okay. okay. These like, these executives. They'll tell me. They, no one wants to ruin their situation. No one wants to. You know because they don't get paid for talking. Mm-hmm. I do. Mm-hmm. So, I get on the phone with these executives. I had to. You know how many people I talked to when, when I had to figure out what's going on at Atlantic. Why is Meek Mill not signed there no more? Why is Kodak Black about to be a free agent? Why did PMB Rock get dropped? PMB Rock was not originally on Empire. Everybody wants to just say, "Oh, Empire's getting art." No, mm-hmm. he's an Atlantic artist. NBA young boy. NBA young boy. Why did they tell that young man? And I'm getting from the source, like the guys. I'm talking to even sometimes their lawyers. Mm-hmm. Why? Did, why did Atlantic basically tell young boy, "Listen, after 22 albums that you dropped in a, in, in a time period where we only contracted you to do." Five, hey, we'll negotiate and give you this amount of money, but we ain't giving you a motherfucking party of masters back. These are real things. What does that mean? When young boy started, he's seventeen. He's twenty two now. He don't understand what the fuck going on. He's just putting out music. It it, it took a team to be around him. He, now he just started, and that's why he loves Birdman so much. Even though you know you can say whatever about Birdman, Birdman helped him understand and his team as well. Bro, you know you just satisfy you theoretically you satisfy your contract four times. They're eating crazy off of you. Mm. Look how much they own your YouTube money. Mm. They they own this. This these are things that to a 17 year old coming in the game that was like when he got in the games, um, NBA young boy was an artist who got a suspended 10 year sentence for being in the drive by. He not thinking about well this is what a music contract looks like. This is how I should do it. No, he's just yo fuck Happy it. I'm he's in out. here. Happy's getting more. so Happy now taking his family. he signs to a label and the label is seeing. 10 times what they even bargained from F- from him forget the negotiation power he doesn't even know what it means mm. so that's what I'm talking about when it comes to music education like we should we should we should I remember for the longest I was confused about the difference between masters and publishing mm-hmm. you get me mm-hmm. okay how do you get paid from Spotify I break all these shit down do you think that the things you've done to quote unquote offend people overshadow the lane you, you, you called for yourself no. And I was close to saying yes, but I would say no just off the fact of I think it's because of how I came in the game. Mm-hmm. And when I mean how I came in the game, um, it wasn't traditional. Um, it it still feels outsider-ish to the, the majority of people who who um, would, would, would voice a dissenting opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel what you're saying. Like, if you come up in a certain space, like radio, they, yeah. it's like a validation that comes with that. Yeah, yeah. like you're yeah. an authority. So exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? So they still look at me, and um, I remember even shit, even with media. There's some of the biggest hip hop stories that I broke, and people would be like, "Well, we ain't, they'll report the same thing later, but they'll be like, we ain't gonna believe him because he ain't TMZ, or we ain't gonna believe him because." He not, you know, double XL. And that's facts. Why is that the case? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I have like there's nobody double XL with more reach to artists than me. 
I'm talking to these actual people. Mm-hmm. I'm putting in the work. Mm-hmm. It just it looks different though. The optics are very different when I say it than them. So you know do, what I mean. You, you talked about Chrissy Teigen slighting you earlier. Do you, do you have any animosity towards just the industry because you you might you you might feel like so many of these people did front on you nah, early on? Of course. <laughs> of course. Yo, I told you this one day though. Yeah. I t- I told Charlamagne. I said, listen. Like, I use these things as motivation. I need it. It fuels me. Like, it, it, for the moments I want to sleep eight hours, now nah, I'm sleeping four. Just because I remember that motherfucker tried to slight me. I, I'm glad it happened. Mm-hmm. But I use it as fuel and motivation. Now, granted, I am petty. So, don't think ten years later we're just be like, oh, okay, he's just fine. No. But I think we all do. If somebody, like, you know, didn't, you know, and, and one thing is, like, if it's an honest mistake, right? Like, say... A great artist emails you a record like, yo, Envy, play this shit. You you overlooked it or you didn't see it. Like, you probably get a million emails, right? And then later that artist brings it up to you. Oh, shit, I didn't see it. Cool. It's different than you're like, man, this thing is whack, right? And then he pops off. He's always going to remember that you called him whack. Mm-hmm. And if and if he wants to, like, I don't know, say you're doing a party or whatever, you want, you want to book him, it's like, nigga, it's double the price. Remember you want this whack-ass artist? And I understand it. You got to understand it. Mm-hmm. So, of course, I do... I use all those things as motivation. Mm-hmm. And um But you gotta understand the pettiness is on the other side too. I know. Because you you got the microphone and you could say something petty. I remember you said the Breakfast Club was gonna be over. No, see. No, he, he never said, said that. You no. said something like that. You did say something about the nah, Breakfast Club or that something. That wasn't that. No, 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 not, not. no. he said something about the Breakfast no, Club. No, no, I didn't say something about the I, I repeat it. Mm-hmm. So I said this. I um I was commenting when Angela Yee said that the um the well she said it's over as you know it. Mm-hmm. And I said, listen, radio is a dying format. And even as I sit here, I'll still maintain that point's a dying format. I said, this is the last legendary radio show. There will be none after this. Like, this is, everybody, it will be happening in different mediums. It's happening now. Look mm-hmm. at Drink Champs and Dollars worth the game. Right? Um, I said, if I was on radio, I would leave. So not because I'm calling the platform that's dying, uh, not because I'm calling the platform dying, I didn't say none of y'all should have left. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, if I'm you, I'm riding this bitch till the wheel fall off. Mm. So are you. Y'all putting a lot of sweat and equi- and blood equity into this shit. I'm sticking with this. However, these days, culturally, if we're talking about just in content, the majority of uh, of of um relevant talking point or content pieces comes from a lot of other places. Yeah, that's a fact. I mean, listen, radio still has the most reach. We cover 98% of the country. But I will say I feel like it has the least impact. Yeah. And, and I think what radio's what radio's place is in, in this in this talk era. Musically. Well, talk too. No, definitely talk. Uh, I mean, 100%. T- definitely because, talk. Because like he said about, you know, a lot of us using clips from other platforms, a lot of platforms use our clips. Same way. Yeah, well, well, yeah, we got, yeah, we got but, the biggest but, in the game. So, but, yeah, but that's uh, we're an exception. But that's but that's the point. The point exactly, is now. Right, right. The point is now. I think that radio is really the ultimate amplifier. It's the mm-hmm. complement to everything that's yeah. going on now. Yes. Like when it comes to personalities, podcasts will lead in that. When it yeah. comes to music, streaming services will lead in that. When it comes to shows, festivals will lead in that. You know what I mean? When it mm-hmm. comes to breaking news, social media. So the only thing radio can do is be the ultimate complement and amplifier to all those things. Correct. Yeah. 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 I agree with that. I, was, I didn't say I was over there. Don't try to put me in the mall box. Cause I know, <laughs> I know you'll try to use that as a chip on your shoulder. Oh no, I mean, I mean, I, I heard him say that before too. And you know, the, the funny thing is, is I'm, you think you petty? I think there's nobody pettier than me. Like we probably, huh? we, we probably the oh, same shit. petty party. Um, Charlamagne knows that. But you know, my whole thing is, if you think something is over, don't call and say I want to get on that platform that I think is whack or, or that is, horrible. That is true. That is very true, like, that is very true too. Like, you know what I mean? That's true. I, I just honestly don't. But I like to spar. I mean, I like to compete. But it is what it is. But I also like to have conversations. I like to see brothers doing well. Mm. I like to see brothers getting money, and I like to help if I can help. Like you know, that's why I do the, the real estate so much. I figured it out. I do great in real estate. So if I can help somebody and show them the way, and I don't, I don't have to charge you. I just want to see you win. That's why I'm able to do it. That's why I asked about what are you doing outside of forget the financial donations, but explaining, breaking it down, oh, helping yeah, yeah. that next no, generation that me and him didn't get. Like nobody taught us. We had to figure it out, bump our heads a couple of times, and then I did. I did have people. I did have people. You know. That helped me definitely on the way up, though, and gave me game. I, I can say that. Man. And by, by the way, also, like, not only with music, right, because, again, remember, I'm not a musician, but, like, even in media, like, shit, I see a bunch of people try to figure it out themselves, too. Mm-hmm. And I understood just, like, when, you know, Charlamagne was at that place of telling a young me, like, 
whatever, whatever. Like this, this is dude, right? This is dude. Like everybody was like, yo, this is like, this is the carbon copy of academics. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe at a different time, and I, everyone they couldn't wait for me to speak on. They're like, yo, you gotta just Sounds eviscerate like you, him. Mannerisms like yeah, you they're like they just wanted me to just like diss this guy that they could be like, ah, yes, we we're rocking with. And I remember there was a time, Charlemagne called me and he said, yo, bro. I'm listening to your content. I see you getting better this and third, but I'm gonna, I ain't gonna lie. A lot of times, sometimes when I hear you doing certain shit, you sound like me. You gotta find your own lane. And I was, it was confused for a second, but I took it as positive, you know, constructive, you know, criticism. And I was like, I gotta figure out me. So this this guy who's coming up, I know he gonna find himself. Right now, he sound a little little, little bit like me. And I remember there was a quote from like Quincy Jones was like, yo, a lot of great musicians, like you know, they. They pl uh, they copy someone else before they find themselves or something like that. I can't remember. It was really really dope quote. Max. And um, I'm allowing him to grow. You know, um, it's gonna happen. So I was the same way with Cluedo. Mm. I used the same echo as Clue. Like he was the person that was from Queens or lived across the street from me. He was the one that, as a DJ, I wanted to be. Yeah, yeah. So you wind up following that, not knowing that you're following it because you just. Happy because you, you're like, oh shit! I started using his echo, yeah. his his mannerisms, and then you realize, no, I gotta find my his own hair lane. dye. Listen, <laughs> what stupid, what sparked what sparked the rant though? Like when you did make the comments about the older pioneers, like did you meet someone that made you think that? Like what 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 sparked that? Um, I don't even remember exactly who it was. I kind of have an idea, but I don't even want to call him out because mm -hmm. now they would be like, oh, you were just calling this one guy broken, Dusty. Mm -hmm. Okay, because <laughs> it, it was it wasn't like I was trying to sum everybody up. That's what it sounded it was, like. It was it was. At max two, definitely one. I'm mm -hmm. looking at this guy. I'm like, this broke dusty motherfucker. So he came up to you like, yo, I'm no, 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 no. I, I'm consuming content. Gotcha. Okay. gotcha so gotcha. you know, a lot of these dudes now, they, 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 they all. And by the way, I love it. I love it. I love that former rappers or even current rappers get on these platforms and talk. Like I love it. And um, it was just this older guy. It was just just all hate towards like what the newer guys were doing and mad criticizing. Like mm -hmm. yo. Why would he do this? And I'm like, so I'm looking up this dude. I'm looking up his time in the music business mm -hmm. and what people were saying about him. You got fucked in all your deals. Mm -hmm. But now you see the new guy, he might be making mistakes. Not saying he not. But you never you never sat him down and be like, yo, listen, this is how they got me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about you do these things differently? You, you're criticizing the sound of me. You're criticizing everything around it. You think that new young kid gonna listen to you he's looking at you like man this broke dusty dude right here mm -hmm. who never ever taught me is now trying to uh, um, scold me I get what you're saying it goes back to that Muhammad Ali quote when Muhammad Ali says you know if I, if I don't have the, the Rolls Royce and I don't have the jewelry they might not listen to me the Correct. same That's true. I, I, I get what you're saying but I, I've always told you man you can't put too much stock in money and youth cause you're not gonna always be the youngest person like, I agree how old are you now 31 yeah. To an it, 18 year old, you're old head. I don't <laughs> you know. And, 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 and you're not way, always going to be the richest. And by the way, by the way, I don't think I'm the richest at all. Envy got all the money. No, I see them cars. No, no. Um, really, shit, that's one thing I had to accept, like, I want to say, like, four or five years ago. And I just want to age gracefully, though. Like, I mm -hmm. just kind of, you know, whatever I kind of get into, you know, sometimes. Sometimes I want to get in my little political bag, and even though, you know, I think right now I'm a little bit immature with my political commentary, but I, I sprinkle that in and I watch my audience. But also, like, it comes... But you I'm, know you're going to get back what you've been putting out, though. What do you mean? So once you get older, it's going to be some young boy kicking your back in, calling you <laughs> no, no, hold on. old and dusty, too. But I won't be stepping on their toes. I'm not going to I'm not gonna see the guy, like, say the guy who, who, who I say uh, people compare me to me, mm -hmm. I'm not going to see him get to a point in his career where he can make a big move or whatever, and maybe the same type of fork in the road that I was at. And if I never put my hand around him and gave him some game, if he makes the same mistake I made, or say like he did a Chrissy T and thing, like, man, mm -hmm. you stupid motherfucker. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to understand that, like, bro, you made those mistakes. You got to allow him to make his. Right? So I don't want to ever be the old dude, right? Broke, dusty, or rich, just... Point at the young dudes criticizing them when you never, you never try to school them, you never pass down no game, and now you're just looking like you're on the porch criticizing them. Talking about, look at y'all out here gang banging. You used to be doing the same shit, we just call something different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's my point with that. Do you, do you think it's a ceiling on what you do? Because like I said, you, everybody got a birthday, and at some point, you all gonna be the the old guy in hip hop. Do you think there's a ceiling? Um, 
No. Because what I believe I do and what people think I do and what I want to do are three different things. Break them down. Um, what do you believe you do? I, so I believe I'm a broadcaster and a platform owner. People believe I'm just a Twitch nigga. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is I want to develop a platform. And th th that's much more important than it won't be forever. People are hearing my voice. It might be an, it might be another person just coming through my network. Like, like that's what I want. You want your own yeah. Twitch. Yeah. You yeah. want yeah. your own yeah. and, 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 and social media thing. And, and that's where I feel like you know me right now as a personality. I'll say this. I always wanted to be on the Breakfast Club. Like when I was coming, I was like, damn, I wish. I, but I was like, damn, it's them three. They ain't had no fourth. And damn, you probably not. In a long line of people, you ain't never interned a radio. You never did all these things, which was traditionally how you kind of get in the space. So I was like, yo, damn, how do I get on? And I always tell rappers this. If I I made my own platform when I couldn't find a platform to go mm -hmm. on. Like, if I got hired at one of these stations, I'm not me. Mm -hmm. And once I made my platform, I remember uh, I remember Q from Worldstar came to me and was like, yo, Ack, yo, we'll pay you this amount of money. Just come work for us. You do Worldstar News. And I saw enough value in me having my platform. I said, nah, I ain't going to do that. But that's how I, I came up with the idea of having a platform. So I look at myself as platform first, even though I'm the face of it. My mm -hmm. face is driving it. Mm -hmm. But at some, at some time, the platform is supposed to live on. And, you know, even now, as I'm, you know, like, shit, I, we own a few studios, like, in, you know, Jersey City, and I'm trying to build out, you know, some podcasts and stuff, probably either a network or not, maybe just not even the podcast network, just a, a digital digital network. Mm -hmm. That was to the point where I'm like, okay, cool. Your face has driven your platform so much that all these new young media niggas, they all look at you like how you looked up to Charlemagne. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. all look at you like, bro, we watched this of yours. Mm -hmm. This is why... I, I've taken a grown-up approach because I used to go at people who were similar to me. I'm like, nigga, you copy my shit. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, let me let me put my arm around you and try to invite y'all to the fold. That's that's and the show them the right way to do it. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully I can empower them too. Like, l let me empower y'all rather than kind of like be like, oh, I'm the only one through the door. Come sit next to me. That's why I created the Black Effect Podcast Network. Like, even with the Breakfast Club, the Breakfast Club, I want to be a format that outlives all of us. Correct. You know, Yee's going to do her own thing. If, if Envy ever decides he wants to move on, I ever decide I want to move on, at least that name can still be here with new players. Yeah. I was going to ask, now, you say you talk to a lot of different artists and try to mend beef and try to talk to them. Do you ever have conversations with 6 9 Yeah. Now, how do those conversations turn out? Man, frustrating. Frustrating because um, he's one of those people who, yeah, you're not petty than him, Envy. No. You're not. Mm -mm. Anytime... I try to appeal to his humanity anytime I try to be like, yo, bro. And we've gotten to arguments where, like, like, you know, just his friends were like, I man, I'm not fucking with you right now at all. I'm not answering your calls. I'm not like, this. I, I, it's one thing I always suggest, like, oh, don't do that. Can't control you. But at times I'm like, this is too much. Um, and oftentimes this is this is how he acts. Like, for example, PMB Rock just passed away, you know, and he had a negative comment. Mm hmm. You know, I used to repost those. I, I told him, I said, that's a dub. I can't, I'm, like, it feels like I'm almost passively amplifying that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not going to sit there and delete every one of your comments. You could be in a conversation like with every every random fan, but I'm not reposting that at all. But even when he when he posts a negative comment, man, I'll, I'll call him like, bro, mm -hmm. are you serious? And you know what he always says? He always has one of those, yo, act. This is why I hate when you do this. When... PNB Rock was alive and was saying he can't wait for the day I die. You reposted him saying that. But now he passed away. I'm supposed to just why can't I why can't I now keep the same energy? And that's really his type of that's his reaction to most of these things. But you can't be mad at that. Because a lot of these people said they hope he dies, they hate him, he's a snitch, he's a rat, talk about him, gave him middle fingers, fuck that, yeah. fuck that, and the other. So now when something happens, he's, you know, not to say it's right, but for him, he's like, I don't give a fuck if you're alive or dead, I don't fuck with you. That's how he felt. The, 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 shit, that's why the whole King Vaughn thing, I remember having a 
Yeah, me and him we ain't talked for a while after the King Von thing. Like, yeah, and he was just like, and I give him credit in the sense of you know as a friend he had me say, say yo, I, I know you're really upset. Let's talk about it. And I just sat there and I was just like, yo, this is more than y'all issues. And he was quoting twenty things that King Von said to him. He's like, yo, King Von rapped in a lyric. This he's saying this about me. They all can't wait till I die. Why can't I? And I remember saying to him, I'm like, well, people are hurt. A lot of people are hurt. And even sometimes when these artists who I have somewhat of a connection with, I'm hurt. I'm ha- I'm hurt at their passing. And then I control a platform that you're using or trying to use to disrespect those same artists. So you're trying to amplify my hurt. My hurt. So it's it's like you know it's very difficult, but um, you know. I, th- I think for him, he, he, there got to be some place where he finds some inner peace. See, but I also feel like if we have beef when you're alive, it doesn't end when you die. Like, and that's that's whoever has beef. Like, and I always look at it like Fifty. Like, you know, Fifty's my brother. If one of those people that have beef with Fifty die, he's not gonna stop. All right, and but, that's a man that got shot nine times. Listen, neither one of y'all are wrong. You see, but, you see what I'm but, but, but but neither one of y'all are wrong. But you just gotta understand, you gotta deal with the consequences that come with that. Correct. So if you're gonna Shit on somebody who passed away. Know that that person has people who love them. Mm-hmm. Know that that person has people who ride for them. And when they see you, it's gonna be some con- it's gonna and be some consequences and repercussions. I think he's accepted that fate. Exactly. But he but, definitely but, has. but 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 here's the thing too, right? I I do know in the course of hip hop conversation, and I remember one time when he told me he was like, "Yo, he did something." I forgot what it was. It was some like he was like he with the Nipsey mural shit, and he was just like, "Yo, they said I couldn't come here. I went there." Like, yo, if anybody else, if, if they said anybody else could have go somewhere and they went there, they would call them tough. But they all just mad at me, talking about I'm disrespectful. Nobody, why you not call me tough when you call the other guy tough? And, you know, I always I always have this one saying, I'm like, listen, man, sometimes it's better to be liked than to be right. Because you're arguing such technicalities. And the same point you're saying, well, if they're saying that about when he dies, why can't he keep the same energy? Well, nobody likes 6 9 except like me. Right. <laughs> right? So, like, Facts. truth be told, you, they're, they're having a parade if he dies. You know this, right? They're Absolutely. having a full parade. And there will be nobody on social media saying, stop it, guys. No. It's going to be no, everybody's no. pot. That's what I'm trying to say. It's going to be like Queen Elizabeth times 100. Except I don't know. The way they, they had fun with Queen Elizabeth. Oh, no, so oh, yeah. That's how they're going to do it. Thousand. But like, like, see, but like 6ix9ine does stuff that has nothing to do with beef, right? He's in Russia right now performing. Yeah. He sticks up his middle finger and says, fuck Britney Griner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the Britney? Britney, you can't. He can't pull up a Britney Griner rap that says he said anything about him. No, I agree. I agree. And by the way, he did say he was drunk, but still, like, I don't be here defending him because I do think he just has a. He just loves that beef shit, man. You know. Do you ever look back at your drunken rants and say I went too far? And the reason I ask that is because of watching people around you who have had to deal with those consequences, whether it was six nine going to jail, whether it was, you know, XXX, God bless the dead, you know, getting murdered, all the other rappers that you named that you had a relationship with. Is it worth it? Um, if I ever say something or I speak out of turn or if I say something I didn't mean or maybe I misunderstood something and reacted to it in one of those rants, I usually address it. I, I'm, I'm always, I try to hold myself accountable. I let the people hold me accountable for mm-hmm. too. You know, there have been times I think I've been all the way right and people are like, nah, especially like, you know, you could get a read from like, you know, the temperature of everybody. Um, one thing I try not to do is allow myself to be bullied, but also sometimes Again, I'm going to keep saying this. Sometimes this is more important to be liked than to be right. Mm-hmm. For example, I remember people saying whatever, like, okay, I commented about Freddie Gibbs, right? Mm-hmm. Man, nobody, and 50 said used to say this too, nobody remembers the action that caused a reaction. Mm-hmm. Freddie Gibbs was putting up memes with me photoshopping a casket and him spitting on it. Mm-hmm. Nobody cared about that, right? I comment like, I make two jokes about him getting beat up. Oh, my God, look at his bitch ass. That's what I'm saying. So people only see one side. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like, they like Freddie Gibbs, especially on Twitter. They like him more than me. So if if I trip and fall, it's like, yes. If something happens as really as a result of his own actions, they're like, yo, wait, wait, you can't, you can't laugh at that. So, again, you know what I mean? It's always going to be, like, um, like um, one-sided like that, but... You know, I've understood that through the media. Like, the media create favorites. Mm-hmm. And, like, for example, everything you've seen popping off with me, where is it emanating from? Shade Room. And by the way, I love, you know, I, I love Angie. Um, so it's, it's not her. It's just that platform and the demographic there don't really fuck with me. You, This shit don't emanate from really rap blogs. You know what I mean? Again, amp, I mean, granted, it's a bigger blog, but, like, that audience don't really fuck with me. If they like me, it will be very different. There are certain artists I see make mistakes 
that people like, and they'll be like, oh, he ain't mean it like that. But when they don't like you, oh, hell no, nah, he definitely meant it like that. Have you had uh, time to, like, really reflect on your comments in regards to the older pioneers in hip-hop? Like, have you had time to reflect on it and say, okay, maybe I shouldn't have said the word Dusty. Or maybe, you know, maybe I, maybe I should have just said, hey, financially, how come they aren't doing as good as they should be because they invented hip-hop? I mean, yes. And again, I first of all, I, didn't, I knew this point, uh, the bigger context was never going to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. If I knew it was going to be even amplified to that to that reach, yes, I would have not said that to hopefully let's have the conversation. But granted, we just all agreed they don't want to talk about it. But anyway. you know how you can make them have the conversation? What? Apologize for calling them Dusty and say, you know what? Maybe oh, I used a bad choice on. of words. Hold on. But but here's the thing. I can't apologize for something I didn't do. Like, I didn't call all of them Dusty. Everybody who was responding, you see, what did I say earlier? I agree with LL 100%, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. except 80% of what he was talking about wasn't to me because I didn't say it. I never said that your um, money could be equatable to your uh, to hip-hop contributions in the past. Well, you, well, you, well, you left it broad because you didn't name a name. So being exactly. that you didn't name a name, you can only think you're generalizing Wait, all which, That's what I regret because usually I love calling names. Mm -hmm. I should have just called that dude name, but I didn't think my audience was even going to know the dude. Mm-hmm. So, but now everybody done responded. I can't. I don't want to now go back and point like I was that. talking to that nigga right there. And by the mm -hmm. way, the dude responded too. The you know person, I mean? the one person you was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. My goodness. So listen, I mean that is a bigger conversation. And by the way, when he responded, he kind of almost agreed that it was. Never mind. Let me just keep it going. But the bigger conversation <laughs> is how can we help? Uh, you know, the founding fathers, and I think people Absolutely. just people just want you to res to respect. The culture that you eat off. Wait, okay, th that's a good one. Mm -hmm. What legitimately, besides that comment, do people believe that shows lack of respect of the culture or even historically um, rappers who came before? Like, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, mm -hmm. they're using two words to kind of use, uh, uh, paint a large brush on everything I've done. You know what I mean? Well, if you, but if if they if they have if they haven't been paying attention to the whole totality of you and all of the different things you might have done or have done, then they only see that one thing. So they're, they're, like, who the, the they're like, who the fuck is this guy? Room. You know what I mean? See the and, that's on the and, and, and that's and that's where it comes down to this, right? So like, um, you know, but they're not gonna give you a chance because it's already we're, we're in mob culture, it's cancel culture. So, is anybody gonna look up? Yo, does he have other comments disrespecting? All of the old rappers? Mm -hmm. What has he said about them before? What has he said about, you know, the pioneers? What has he said about people who were popping in the 80s and 90s? Okay? He grew up on most of these niggas in the 2000s. What has he said about all these people? Mm -hmm. Is he one of the dudes who are just ignorant, who only likes the under 25-year-old rap music and thinks everybody else is trash? Has he only judged rappers because of money? Mm-hmm. Did anybody go to look that up? Or was it a good way to galvanize and actually, uh, that's the only thing I was proud about. I think everybody was on the same page, even though it was against me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you think about back in history, and by the way, maybe I shouldn't even say this. Maybe not, I was not saying it. I was just like, in history, the worst events that bring people together are usually scapegoated one one particular one particular subset of people or one person. Mm -hmm. Everybody would get on board. Oh, that's the bad guy. Let's go get that motherfucker. So again, I was I, like, I was happy when I seen everybody. Everybody was chiming in. Mm -hmm. Certain people I thought should should set it set it out though. Like Russell should set it out. Like he was come on. So you so you're down to have the conversation with the LLs, the TIs, and everything else. I mean, I think that's the thing people don't understand. Like mm -hmm. you're not a bad guy. You know, what I mean? I've been knowing you for a long time. You're actually a, a student of the game. You know what I mean? And I think just like any of us. You can get caught up in the performance of it all sometimes, you know what I mean? But you got to you got to deal with the consequences of those actions. Like I always tell you, it's it's going to come at some point. We've all gotten punched in the face. You know what I mean? I don't think it's worth it in the long run. I don't. No, no, no. No, no. Of course it's, it's never worth it, mm -hmm. right? What, what I mean worth it is like this is just hip hop and and the same way everybody running around saying it's the most dangerous job in the world which it's not, but still, everybody running around saying that. If you believe that, you you must know when you pick up a mic, you're you might die. 
<laughs> right? So, so, yeah. so, so here's the thing. When I also pick up a mic to give my comments, I understand it might get that serious too. You got to take the – if we're calling it the most dangerous job in history, right, it could go any way at any time. Ba- based, based off how you choose to communicate. Because the way we're communicating now, this is how me and I communicate all the time. Right, but, but you don't communicate – you don't sound like this on Twitch. Yeah, because I'm giving a soliloquy. And, and, and a soliloquy, like if I was talking monotone, I'd fall asleep too. I'd fall asleep while I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm performative on everything. When I, when I mean performative is that I, I'm theatrical. When I'm, when I'm talking, I'm... You're entertaining. And, and also, what I've realized in hip-hop, people think that speaking with confidence means you're aggressive. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll be speaking about a point that I am very confident about making. They'll be like, yo, why are you talking tough like this? Like, what do you say this in person? And I'm like, well, now I'm having a conversation with you. And if we're inside, I'm talking to millions of people through a mic and a screen. Who knows who the fuck is listening, mm-hmm. right? Now, if I'm talking to you, why would I need to shout? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. right here. Mm-hmm. And also, I want to talk to you that you could be able to listen and then be able to understand and respond and vice versa. I guess what my thing is, like, I like all of these conversations, but let's not make them about one individual. Let's make right. them about... Culture, but that's why I, you know what I mean. Why, that's why I say, yo, let's get them up here because I think sometimes when you hear somebody's side and what yeah. they what they're talking about, it it opens it up. And I guarantee from this interview, people are like you more because they're not hearing the clips that they're hearing on the blog sites and the clips that they're hearing on these sites that are only a thirty second clip and, and, when you had a seven hour conversation. And how do we know this? This this in a lot of ways, this is the hate that hate produces. Right. You know what I'm saying? You the Frankenstein monster <laughs> of a lot of, of a lot of hip hop. Because if I come at you for, you know, why you call this woman a B word? It's like yeah, I got to turn the mirror on myself too. Why have I been doing it for so long? If I come at you because you know you called rappers old and dusty, it's like well, damn. When I was young, I was disrespecting the older older generation too. But also more importantly, what can we do for the founding fathers of hip hop? You know, yeah, so they right. they aren't like that. What can we do to where more people are respecting? Women, when, when when we have these conversations. By the way, I kind of also, you know, to sum it up, I, I feel like, you know, hip-hop always needs a villain. And I think because, you know, 6 9 isn't where he used to be in his career, it's kind of like CNN with Donald Trump. Donald Trump not in office no more. Mm-hmm. All right, Joe Rogan, the bad guy. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I, I'm in line to be one of those guys. And, you know, I could, you know, I was even telling my brother yesterday, I was just like, I could watch every word I'm saying if they want to take something out of context. Absolutely. Bro, they went back 10 years to uh, drum up something randomly. You know what I mean? They went back 10 years, so... Trust me, I know. Yeah, come on. You know you, I he know. Knows. Yeah. You know I know. He knows. Okay, yeah. Well, we appreciate you for stopping through, brother. I didn't think I, I was going to make it up here. Well, actually, I thought I wanted Angelique to be here. I, before before she, you know, uh, went well, on her new uh, These, these yeah. are the final days yeah, of the Breakfast, Breakfast Club, Club, as you know it. Know it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah. you you got in before the transition. Oh <laughs> man, right. yo, could I be one of the new hosts though? Yeah, we can. We, we rotating yeah. guests next yeah. year. At yeah. least I'll be swinging on me instead of Charlemagne. Charlemagne yeah. got security now. You're you goddamn know, right. Nobody's swinging on nobody. Yeah, we have security. Yeah, I, got, I, came, I, came I ain't got swung on in a long time. Yeah, As you should. <laughs> 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 I think you're crazy if you weren't. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you joining us. It's Academics DJ Academics. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. 